All right, joining me now, neurologist Dr. Thomas Pitts. Dr. Pitts, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, so we just heard from Kelsey there. We know that Aaron Rodgers has, you know, spoken very publicly about how psychedelics, in his, in his opinion, have improved his athletic performance. Is there any known scientific link there? Well, absolutely. I mean, first of all, thank you for having me. This is such an important topic. The only reason why we're talking about this is stigma, not based on scientific fact. We know that manipulating serotonin is the basis for most of our pill-based conventional uh, antidepressant therapies. Psychedelic therapies, to me, it's a matter of, you know, what dose, what medical conditions that are comorbid should we watch out for? But in terms of what it does to serotonin, I would expect a soul searching journey where you uh, kind of experience death of ego, as they say, you will confront issues that maybe you've guarded against through denial. Nobody wants to admit that it was their fault for something. You might confront something very directly when you do that. Sleep better, your depression might Im improve, your anxiety might improve, your focus might improve. Bring that onto the football field, you have a better performance. So, so, Dr. Pitts, I mean, what are the scenarios, you know, in which you would prescribe a patient these psychedelic treatments? And are there any scenarios in which you would say, no, you really actually need to avoid this type of treatment? Absolutely, which is why, first of all, I'm a big proponent for we just need we need to legalize the research of these things. Right. Nobody's talking about putting it in every CVS. But, you know, we have our law. Right. We have we have people telling us, hey, mental health is a priority in this country, but then also telling us, hey, don't go down these kind of untraveled avenues that people have been using for centuries. And what I would say is, yes, precisely to your point, doctors have to be involved because we have to look at somebody and say, hey, did you know that you have a cardiomyopathy with a mitral valve issue? And in your specific case, this is not the medicine that would be safe for you like ketamine could cause tachycardia in a very small group of people but for all comers can be very helpful for things like depression and pain so yes we need doctor involvement we just don't want people out into the forest doing this but people are going to seek help for their problems and um and if, if we're not able to step in as doctors because of legal and political forces uh stopping us from growing that creates a scenario an impasse where people are actually going to go out and do it themselves and like you said maybe unaware that they have some other medical condition or other medication on board which could be uh, uh injurious to, the, to well, them well dr dr pitts at the top of this you know you talked about the stigma and there certainly is uh still sig stigma surrounding psychedelics mm -hmm. but you know really things have changed and there are so many more people who who open their minds to this kind of thing i was discussing uh with one of the producers here in just the last five ten years things have changed significantly i mean the fact that people know about ayahuasca talk about it uh are you kind of surprised at how things have changed and, and do you expect that to continue Oh, I'm a big proponent. I mean, I, I finished my fellowship at the great Columbia University up here in New York City. And I think uh, people who scoff at the ideas of using this based on stigma, when I turn around and tell them, hey, did you know that Columbia University has a ketamine center? You can Google it. All of a sudden, eyes open up. You know, this is a real thing. I was kind of always taught by societal norms or whatever that this is some kind of hocus pocus thing. And what we're finding is it's kind of like cramming in years of uh, anti antidepressant therapy or anti-anxiety therapy and talk therapy at once. We're getting this massive acute effect, uh, effect. And I became a believer the first time I saw it interrupt acute suicidality in a veteran. When I saw someone who I believe unchecked would have killed themselves receive ketamine for the first time, I became a believer. So I'm not surprised and I cannot wait for people to just get out of the way of the medical profession and let us do our due diligence and look at this because people are going to use it. Yeah. It's just a matter of if they have doctors in the medical community making sure we can guide them through this safely or not. Yeah, and what you just said there about the veteran, I mean, that is so profound, uh, you know, and to think that there, there could be help available for so many people who, who really do desperately need it. Uh, Dr. Thomas Pitts, as always, appreciate speaking with you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.